to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord. I bless your holy name, sing your praises forever. I forget not your benefit. We bless your holy name. Sing your praises forever and forget not your benefit. I will not forget. I will not forget. Just hold hands together if you can. Let's bless the Lord and edify our spirit man. Is someone praying? We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Are you praying? The mighty God making mighty men. The mighty God making mighty men. The glorious God making glorious men. You are seated on the throne. You are seated on the throne. 
It was heated on the floor Sweat for a few minutes. We worship. As we behold you, we are changed. We are empowered even by the spirit of grace. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb. Spiritual songs, making melody your heart unto the Lord. Kanabalaga da barus kali brande bela kusha brahas kada baliada. Ela baradus kala brande bela husia da bagadi. Ask the Lord for an encounter tonight. Please don't be distracted. This is part of the meeting. Ask him for a refreshing. Ask him for an encounter. A refreshing. And an encounter. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. I will see. Of the wonders of your world. 
Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Just be in an attitude of worship. God is doing something in your life. Be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you. And I will be still and know you. 
my God my life be still and know you The maker of man, the lifter of man. forever this place will become an altar of fire an altar of grace an altar of power an altar of transformation an altar of encounters we have come tonight to hear you speak we have come tonight to experience your love your wisdom your power Oh, that you will stretch your hands to bless, to heal, to deliver, to lift. Grant us wisdom, even by your word. And we vow that forever you will be glorified in this place. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. What a powerful time of worship. It is a very important requirement in the saints. We must learn to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. When we worship the Lord, a lot happens in the place of worship. That exchange. Hallelujah. Our weaknesses for his strength our foolishness for his wisdom our fears for his power so when you are spending time worshiping the lord don't just think you are singing songs and celebrating it's more than that you don't have to feel a physical effect like a sickness or pain go to know you were changed in that atmosphere it is impossible to stretch and release yourself to the power and the influence of his spirit and then remain the same hallelujah i bless the lord for every one of us to him be all the glory in the name of jesus christ thank you so much let me start by appreciating all our zaria leaders amazing work let's celebrate them let's give them a big god bless you week in week out hallelujah i was we were discussing during the workers meeting yesterday and i told them that 
you know you are a bad leader when transformation and impact stops with your absence hallelujah in this kingdom any man is only powerful because of the message you carry not just because of who you are intrinsically what makes us special and what makes us powerful is nothing in ourselves but because of the message we are privileged to carry in God's economy the message is greater than the messenger the messenger is only great because of the message that he's carrying when you become greater than the message something is wrong hallelujah so that whether the messenger is there or not once the message is there hope is there life is there healing is there hallelujah and we bless all who are connecting with us by way of the internet we thank god for your participation tonight and we know that the lord will bless us in jesus name let's honor a few of our fathers and precious people in our midst it always we're a house of honor and it's very important to celebrate them we have in our midst pastor tula let's honor him daddy we bless the lord for your life thank you so very very much hallelujah hallelujah let's bless the lord for professor onu and his dear lovely wife our mother daddy mommy god bless you thank you so very much and um reverend ubandoma just came in the lord bless you thank you reverend hallelujah praise the name of the lord um lieutenant Cornell anthony somewhere in our midst i hope he was not kept outside please let's honor him the ceo in charge of one of the battalion in zaria here we honor you sir wherever you are and for everyone who has come many have traveled from around the region god bless you we have come to experience his power and his grace in the name of jesus christ acts chapter 20 and verse 20 let's pay attention to the word of god acts chapter 20 and verse 20 it says, and now I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. The apostle is speaking. He said, I have not kept back anything that I know can be profitable unto you. This is the character of a true shepherd. That you have an assignment to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and make available to the saints every dimension of kingdom truth that is meant for their victory and their excelling in Christ hallelujah I kept back nothing if I found out that the revelation for prosperity is profitable I will teach you if I find out that you need to have the knowledge to be free from the influence of demons I will teach you if I find out that you need to be fortified and sustain that revelation of who you are in Christ, I will teach you. He says, I kept back nothing, provided I found out it was profitable for your growth and for your excelling. It then becomes my assignment to teach. Hallelujah. And I can assure you by the spirit of grace that this house will not hold back anything that will be required and be needed for your overall excelling as the believer in the name of jesus christ we'll start tonight and then we'll find somewhere to pray and then tomorrow we'll have an opportunity to listen to the word further and then to pray and just let him bless us um, someone was asking me if tomorrow will be a miracle service any service that comes with hunger fire the presence of god expectation and faith must be a miracle service hallelujah god cannot come and watch you go back with any challenge and any problem so i'd like you to prepare open up your heart and believe you are coming for a proper miracle service to receive from god to be changed to be transformed hallelujah you can maximize today and tomorrow and make it a rich moment of encounters hallelujah i prepared something to teach but while i began to meditate the lord just put it strongly in my heart to share 
something else and so I will be teaching along the theme the seed of Abraham write it down and please pay attention the seed of Abraham the seed of Abraham ignorance is very costly in the kingdom please look at me you have heard me say it again and again that this kingdom operates by light excelling in this kingdom is light dependent hallelujah not just desire dependent you can intend to excel and achieve results in whatever area but the moment there is the absence and the bankruptcy of light and light enough look at this beautiful hall tonight we are able to see ourselves very clearly to the degree to which light is available is that true if we put off all of these lights right now and then we on the light of a phone it will no longer be complete darkness but it will not be light enough to give us this kind of experience so it matters the kind and the quality of light that you have in your spiritual experience ignorance is terrible and ignorance is dangerous in fact i think it's proverbs 23 proverbs 23 23 or so please give it to us i hope i got that right proverbs 23 it says by the truth by the truth then it warns you it says sell it not buy the truth and sell it not and every time you go to buy the truth you will find out that there is wisdom instruction and understanding buy it too hallelujah buy the truth and sell it not this immediately tells you that the truth may be free but it's not cheap it will cost you something to buy the truth hallelujah you use the currency of meekness you use the currency of humility you use the currency of hunger to buy the truth and then he says when the truth looks like it's not working in your life the devil will come to tempt you to sell it how many of you have you seen people who once they are broke they will start looking around if they see that they have two wrist watches they will carry one maybe they need to pay their rent they would sell one shoe he's saying don't be tempted when you are stranded and you are looking at the things to sell away from your life among the many things you sell he says sell it not that means there is someone waiting to bargain the truth with you buy the truth after using humility and hunger and discipline and diligence to buy the truth do not allow the devil come and bait you and say this truth is useless you can sell it do not make the mistake of Esau he says sell it not and then with the truth by wisdom by instruction and by understanding hallelujah most believers fail in life not because that which has been done by Christ and in Christ is a fallacy but because we do not know and we do not have the requisite level of knowledge and spiritual intelligence required to walk in the reality of the riches of redemption and tonight I want to open us very briefly as we pray the seed of Abraham Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 let's begin our journey there Genesis chapter 12 the Bible tells us that Abraham was the son of Terah and that God called him the Lord came to Abraham and told him he said Abraham get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house and go to a land that I'm going to show you verse 2 he says I will make of thee a great nation remember he's talking to an idol worshiper He's not talking to one who has acknowledged the Lordship of Jehovah. He's talking to one who was an idol worshiper from all of the Chaldeans. Hallelujah. And now he's giving him a promise. He called him out. 
and said, Abraham, I want to propose something. Leave this life, leave this family, this background, and this experience, and follow me to a land that I will show you. And if you believe me enough and trust me to be more superior and more superior above all these gods and I, all these idols, I now leave you with a blessing. I will make of thee a great nation. Are we following now? I will bless thee. I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And then he says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Follow this story carefully. So he comes to call this idol worshiper remember as at the time he came to call abraham abraham was already in distress i hope you know that because this was someone who was waiting for a miracle of fruitfulness don't you think he just met a man who was smiling and everything was all right he met a man who was utterly confused things were not working in his life and notice he never even spoke about the problem abraham had you thought he would call him out and say abraham i know you don't know me but i've seen your tears do you notice the same thing happened to Moses? When he called Moses, he didn't talk about stammering, didn't talk about Moses' problem. He said, Moses, I have a bigger assignment for you. It is amazing that sometimes when God ignores what seems to be wrong with you, it is because the answer to what you are looking for is already in a bigger plan. So that God may not just come and start dealing with petty things. That was why when Moses was talking and saying, do you not know I'm a stammerer? God had to rebuke him and say, who created the mouth and all of these things? Since you don't believe me to solve that problem, I will put Aaron to work with you. That means if Moses had kept quiet and believed him, he would have been healed. Hallelujah. So he calls Abraham as Abraham now and now begins to propose a blessing. As at the time he was speaking, this was not yet Abraham's reality. I hope you know that. He was just telling him, this is what will happen. Abraham had a choice. He would have said, I don't know who you are, but never come around my life again. I have serious problems to face. I'm facing mockery and shame from people there. Don't you come and bring any plan of making my name great. And God would have respected and honored his will and gone to look for someone else. But Abraham heard this and that began a journey in obedience the bible says abraham left and began to move you you read lot went with him and then later on you know abraham now began that journey of faith listen very carefully let's now go to chapter 17 chapter 17 and verse 6 genesis 17 and verse 6 now he makes another promise I will make the exceeding fruitful. I will make the exceeding fruitful. Are we Bible students? He says, and I will make nations of thee. He says, kings shall come out of thee. Kings. God is speaking now to Abraham. As at the time he said this, again, these things were not yet fully manifest in his life. There were portions of it by now that were already manifesting. Now, verse 7 is my concern. He said, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. What is the covenant? To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So we see that there is a serious journey here with Abraham and God. Abraham comes to God and God begins to propose several blessings that will happen to him for obeying and walking with him. Here and there we see him adding blessing upon blessing, telling Abraham all the things that will be captured in his experience. And when we get to Genesis 22, you know the story he now calls Abraham the ultimate test now to release him into the fullness of that blessing. It came to pass after these things, God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, behold, here I am. Verse 2, he says, take now thy son, 
thy only son Isaac whom thou lovest and get thee into a land of Moriah and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee. Verse 3. The Bible says Abraham rose up early and saddled his ass, his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Verse 4. Then on the third day, so how many days did they journey? Three days of blind journeying, carrying your child. Lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Verse 5. And Abraham said to his young men, Abide here with me, with the ass, and I will, and the lad, and I will go up yonder to worship and come again unto you. Verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac. Follow the story carefully. He took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Because you cannot offer a burnt offering. Where is the sacrifice on the altar? I see the knife. I see the, the wood, but where is the sacrifice? Verse 9. Okay, he now says, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went up, two of them together. 9. They came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac. Now watch this. Do you know what it meant for him to catch Isaac? Think how long he waited for the arrival of this boy. If he just got Isaac immediately, or if he was Ishmael or one of his sons, that would have been easy. Now he caught this boy and bound him and laid him upon the altar. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Huh. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said Abraham Abraham the word angel there of the Lord doesn't just mean an angel it literally means Elohim himself he said here am I verse 12 and he said lay not thy hand upon thy lad neither do thou anything unto him read the remaining part please for now I know that thou fearest God seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son he says for now i know when not when you left your house you would have looked at that boy and you would have been wrapped up with compassion and you would have returned back now i know as a result verse 13 and abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a bond offering instead of his son 14 and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh you see why that statement does not work for many people they just shouted Jehovah Jireh and don't read the story before it as it is to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen 15 and the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham from heaven the second time. And he said, by myself I have sworn. Aha. This is a sworn blessing now. A sworn blessing is a blessing that is irreversible. When God has sworn with himself. Because thou hast done this thing. So he tells us the reason why it is a sworn blessing. Because you have done this thing and you have not withheld thy son, thine only son, 17, that in blessing, believers, are we following now? In blessing, give us verse 18. Let's stay there. I think you've, let's, I think you've moved too fast. Okay, 17, keep it there. That in blessing, I will bless thee and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore. Now, this is the part I love. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Hallelujah. This was a very prophetic blessing. 
that not only affected Abraham, he said he seed. Follow the journey now. An idol worshiper, the first call, and he obeys God blindly. And several blessings have been scheduled to find expression in his life. And now the ultimate test comes upon Abraham. And then Abraham honors God in total obedience and surrender. And God now swears by himself. Every other blessing he said, I will, I will, I will. But now he gets to this and he says, no, it is not just that I will. I swear by my own self that this is what I'm going to do. In blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thee. As the stars of heaven and the sand that is upon the seashore and your seed will possess the gates of his enemies hallelujah when Jesus showed up among the many things he did while he walked upon the earth the Bible says he got to a point in Luke 13 in Luke chapter 13 when I will just give us a story and then we'll, we'll just rush to the part that I really really need he met this woman listen carefully now this woman who was bound for 18 years the Bible says and that the woman could not be lifted and when he looked at her he prayed for her he said woman thou art loosed from thine infirmity and he laid hands upon her and the woman was straightened and then there was trouble everybody started making trouble and then when we go to verse for sake of time verse 15 and 16 please they now began to speak and say Jesus don't heal on the Sabbath respect the Sabbath you claim you are Messiah and Jesus looked at them and said you are hypocrites how many of you if your donkey falls into the well on the Sabbath you will not run to carry your, your donkey or whatever it is. Are we together now? And now we go to verse 16. He says, Ought not this woman, listen carefully, being a daughter of Abraham. That means this is the basis. It is not just because I am king of kings and lord of lords. I met a woman and because I am God, I remember something that I told Abraham. Ought not this woman... This is the basis for her healing. Being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, there was a promise that you will possess the gates of your enemies. Now, this woman was bound for 18 years. It says, should be loose from this bond, even on the Sabbath day. He was asking them a question. Have you not read it in your law that God swore to Abraham that in blessing he will bless him in multiplying he will multiply him and his seed and that the seed will possess the gates of their enemies now this woman is bound do you know what this means Jesus was teaching something here he said this woman was not just healed because of my presence she was healed because of a revelation that if she had known even before my arrival would have brought her healing he didn't say look there were times that he said I will be clean there were times that he did it as an act of his volition but he said madam you do not know that you carry a heritage of honor and blessing he said if I'm helping you but it didn't have to be me if only you understood that you were part of a lineage connected to a covenant that being a daughter of Abraham one day you would have woken up and say God of Abraham remember the covenant you have made with Abraham and his seed and God would have honored it and that woman would have been supernaturally healed but she was bound there not because Satan was powerful but because there was ignorance are you listening now this is very very important do you know why the Jews walked in a lot of pride. They walked in a lot of pride because of the consciousness of this. They were aware that no matter what happens, God will not leave them to suffer forever. Because they are bound by a covenant until today. 
the Jews still walk in that consciousness for some reason they know that if it is this life and this earth you are tenants we are the ones this earth was willed to us and they carry that mentality even though by physical descent now I hope you know that by earthly genealogy we do not qualify to come close because we come among the Gentile nations are we together now yes and Jesus himself even confessed and said salvation was for the Jews but then Paul now begins to speak and he says Jesus now came as a bridge are we together now he came as that bridge to bring together both Jew and Gentile into one new man breaking down that wall of separation are we together and in Galatians chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3 give us verse 29 Paul now is mentoring the church and is helping them understand among the many benefits that have come to them in Christ now here's what he said he says and if ye be Christ's then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise if ye be Christ that means if you are outside of Christ you cannot claim that blessing of Abraham you cannot claim that there is no basis by earthly natural descent you are not part of it but that Jesus came now and gave us that basis listen if you do not understand this the days that are coming would destroy you it will almost be as if your salvation experience were a lie are we together if ye be Christ please keep that scripture there then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise do you know what it means to be a seed the seed of a man it means number one on legitimate ground you have access you have access to everything listen carefully if you are a son or a daughter of a man listen to my message I preach in Abuja on inheritance redefining inheritance hallelujah you can on legitimate ground know that by reason of being the seed or the son of so 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 and so I have access now access does not mean possession access means potential it should be yours but whether it ends up being yours in experience or not is another story but that you know that I have access to these riches access to these blessings are we together this is very powerful if ye be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise the seed of Abraham when Jesus came he walked upon the earth with confidence not only that he was the son of the living God he was also the seed of Abraham the Jews walked with confidence knowing that they were the seed of Abraham and the Bible says in Christ every one of us listen carefully that we are the seed of Abraham whether you are Igbo, whether you are Yoruba, whether you are Hausa, whether you are Nigerian, you are whatever, provided you have come into Christ through the new birth experience. Now, this is not just some Pentecostal gibberish for you to just jump around with. You have to believe that this is a present reality and there are implications to being the seed of Abraham. You were not a seed by natural birth, but you were a seed by adoption. Are we together now yes a seed by adoption and if ye be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise someone say I am the seed of Abraham let me tell you what this means it then means that the blessing of Abraham you need to understand all that has come to you by reason of being a seed of Abraham and I'll just tell you three of them very quickly and then my concern tonight is how you can walk in the reality of this because if you understand what I am telling you this is the cure for a lot of the economic hardship 
that people are going through this is the cure for a lot of fears the moment you generalize your life and you think i am part of everybody you are already in defeat you have to understand the basis for your exemption that i am the seed of abraham the seed of abraham in and through christ now if you call abraham alone for you and you exempt Christ from the equation, you are in trouble because you have to acknowledge the one who became the connector to that blessing too. If ye be Christ, then are ye the seeds of Abraham. If the Jews today reject Christ, it will still work for them because it's a sworn blessing of their natural descent. But if you reject Christ and just embrace Abraham, you are in trouble because that makes you a thief immediately. You are not part of it. The only basis is Christ are we together hmm. I am the seed of Abraham I am the seed of Abraham whether in Zaria whether in Lagos whether during crisis whether during kidnap whether during whatever it is you carry this consciousness I am the seed of Abraham in Christ. That means number one. Please write it down. What is the implication of being the seed of Abraham? Just saying I am the seed of Abraham alone will not do much for you. You have to have a revelation. What is the revelation of being a seed of Abraham? What does it mean? What are the implications? Number one. Are you ready? That means you are a legitimate partaker. Please write it down. You are a legitimate partaker of every blessing, every covenant, and every promise made to Abraham. That means you are a legitimate partaker of every blessing, every covenant, every promise made to abraham please do not forget this what does it mean to be the seed of abraham you are a legitimate partaker of every blessing every covenant every promise made to abraham and his seed hallelujah do you understand what that means yes and remember that these blessings and these covenants had nothing to do with region or physical geography in terms of you have to be here for it to work when he gave him that blessing the blessing of fruitfulness now please look up there is what the bible calls the blessing i don't have all the time to teach it tonight there is what the bible calls the blessings of abraham you have to know the difference are we together now and then listen carefully there is what the bible calls the blessing of abraham three things one the blessing two the blessing of abraham three the blessings of abraham i'm going to tell you the difference if you do not understand the difference you will just be jumping over nothing these things are clear in the bible Let's start with the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, please. We we'll begin our reading from verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed so the gospel was preached to abraham are we together that in thee all the nations shall be blessed verse 9 it says so then ye which are of faith are blessed with faithful abraham what does this mean for as many as are the works okay well let's just stop at verse 9 8 and 9 i just want you to look at something there it says let's go to verse 8 again the scripture foreseeing 
that God will justify. Everybody say justify. So the blessing of Abraham had to do with justification. Are we together? God was going to justify the heathen. Who are they? Those who are not Jews of natural descent. Are we together now? There needed to be a basis for them to be part of this. Seeing that God will later bring the heathen or the Gentiles to be part of this blessing. He now gave Abraham the honor. Are we together now? He preached the gospel to Abraham. So when you say the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. Write it down please. The blessing of Abraham is not multiplication. Is not cars and houses. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. That means Abraham had the opportunity for the gospel to be preached unto him and he believed God. It was counted to him for righteousness. So we, the descendants now in Christ, when we hear the gospel and we believe, we have an opportunity to partake of the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith. Are we following now? The blessing of Abraham is not cars and houses. It's nothing physical. In fact, blessings are not physical. You know it by now. The Bible says that Abraham gave Isaac everything he had. But to his other sons that came from the concubines, he gave them gifts. Yet there is no record of him giving Isaac anything physical. But the Bible says he gave him everything he had. But to the sons that came through the concubines and other people, Ketura and so on and so forth. He gave them physical things. Said the blessing of Abraham. Justification by faith. Justification by faith. That means no matter what it is that becomes a, a legal basis for Satan to accuse you and destroy you you can partake of the blessings of Abraham and the condition to receive the blessings of Abraham is not prayer the condition for receiving the God the blessing of Abraham is hearing the gospel and believing it are we together if you want to walk in the blessing of Abraham you must hear the gospel like Abraham heard and believe God And since Christ is that mediator, you are going to hear the gospel that reveals the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Then you now believe and you are accorded the gift of righteousness justified by faith. Now you have the blessing of Abraham. If you are following, say amen. The blessing of Abraham. Most people think the blessing of Abraham. Remember, the blessing, no S, of Abraham. Justification by faith. Seeing, now you understand the scripture, that one day the Gentiles, the heathen, will come into that faith experience. He preached the gospel to Abraham, saying, In thee shall thy seed be blessed. Abraham believed that gospel and it was imputed unto him for righteousness are we together and everybody who believes the gospel through Christ the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus now when you believe you are now a partaker that is the first level the blessing of Abraham are we together so we can continue now verse where did we stop verse give us verse 10 now we'll run it through down to 13 for as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in these things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 11. It says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Verse 12 now. It says, And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. This is my area of interest. It now says, Christ has redeemed us. Verse 13 from the cause of the law being made a cause for us for it is written cost is everyone that hangs upon the tree verse 14 
he says give it to us please media let's work together that the blessing do you see it there now no s the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles how through jesus christ are you seeing now you can replace that word the blessing of abraham with justification by faith that justification by faith might come upon the gentiles through jesus christ comma that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith this is what the bible calls the blessing that is the second level please write it down you need to understand this the blessing of abraham opens the door for you to receive the blessing the blessing is more than an anointing the blessing is more than a pronunciation the blessing is literally the spirit of god the holy spirit alongside the possibilities that come with him is what the bible calls the blessing please do not forget this the blessing of abraham justification by faith now gives you room to receive the blessing the promise of the spirit please keep it to us there verse 13 so it does not just stop at receiving the blessing of abraham there are many who have received the blessing of abraham they have believed the gospel are we together now but they have not truly received the blessing 14 the promise of the spirit through faith the promise of the spirit through faith the blessing of abraham through faith or by faith the promise of the spirit through faith now watch this what is the blessing let me define it for you for the sake of your notes the blessing classically speaking is the holy spirit but with respect to its operation write it down the blessing is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit the blessing is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit in the life of a believer that compels creation aha the operation the dimension of the operation of the holy spirit in the life of a believer that compels creation to respond to that believer as it was in the garden of eden a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit that compels creation to respond to that believer in obedience as though he were in the garden of eden are we together now this is what we call the blessing so that when the holy spirit rests upon the believer there is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that is called the blessing and that the assignment of that blessing if and when activated and I'll be showing you that it works like a force it compels everything that needs to gravitate into your life I will be showing you a scripture that Paul was teaching the church in Corinth and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that is the assignment of the blessing that means it scans through your life and your destiny everything that is needed for life and godliness that must be at work in your life for your excelling as a believer it will compel it to gravitate within your reach this is powerful the blessing the blessing this is the mysterious force behind favor the mysterious force behind the gift of men and the operation of destiny help us this is the mysterious force behind all of these spiritual possibilities we are looking for so more than just chasing favor more than just chasing men when that force is upon you that means so also the devil can place something upon your life too 
you can carry something upon your head that every good thing that should come to you is authorized by what you are carrying to run away from you. So it does not matter what physical thing is given to you, it will still be a waste. Whether that physical thing is salary, it will be a waste. Whether that physical thing is certificate, it will be a waste. Whether that physical thing is a wealthy father, it will still be a waste. Because something is upon you that compels everything good to leave you. Listen, when an individual is in that state, no matter what you do physically, it does not have lasting value. Do you believe what I'm saying? Even so, come Yeshua, come. Even so, come and take your bride away. How my soul longs to see your face, my King. Even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. Do you believe what I'm telling you? I wish you truly believed it. Because you will now know that in, in Christ, the blessing of Abraham, the first level, I have now been justified by faith. Why? Because I heard the gospel and I believed it. And based on God's integrity, are we together now? I am today the righteousness of God in Christ. It has given me the room to now receive the blessing. Now the blessing is upon me, even in Zaria. The blessing is upon me, even in whatever hole. Regardless my background, now I have access to that which can bail me out. Listen, no matter what wealth seminar you go to, no matter what kind of thing you go, if you do not understand this, leave Zaria and go to Abuja, what you are, you are running away from now will follow you there. Leave Abuja and go to London. What you are running away from will follow you there. Because let me tell you sincerely, it is what is upon you that governs what is around you. Believers, please hear this. You have to know and be able to defend the basis for your excelling in life. Is someone learning? So, the blessing of Abraham justification by faith number two the blessing that dimension of the operation of the holy spirit that works like a force gravitating people gravitating circumstances and opportunities gravitating resources to your life and destiny that makes for your excelling in christ is called the blessing so prosperity is simply walking with the laws of god to give manifestation to the blessing are you now seeing now when you prosper physically you have now taken advantage of the laws of the kingdom to allow that which is at work in you to find expression if i prosper today in terms of physical things the physical things are not the reason why i prosper they are the proof that i'm prosperous and that leads me to the third level now the blessings of Abraham with S in it. It talks about every kind of thing. Influence. What God gave Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 2 and 3. These are the things called the blessings of Abraham. I will make of thee a great nation. That is influence and greatness. I will bless thee and make your name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. Impact. 3. I will bless them that bless you and curse you defense of the spirit and from you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. These are called the blessings of Abraham. Are we together? 17 verse 6. I will make you exceeding fruitful. Genesis now. Kings will come out of you. Nations will come out of you. Is someone getting this now? Let me tell you what many believers do. And this is where we miss it. I've shown you three levels now. Please listen to this message again and again. Hallelujah. The blessing of Abraham. Justification by faith. 
comes through the hearing of faith of the gospel when you believe it is imputed unto you for righteousness number two the blessing the holy spirit now alongside the possibilities that he brings compelling creation to respond to you in a certain way ah this is powerful 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 that means you were never designed to look for anything it was supposed to come under certain conditions when you find yourself looking for money looking for fame looking for helpers you have already missed it god designed this system such that the things that are made for life and godliness will gravitate towards you under a certain condition not every condition hallelujah when you put an air conditioner that air conditioner is filled with all kinds of physical laws mechanisms that were designed to change your physical climate so it can be hot outside but once you put on the ac what happens all it, it they are just laws laws working with air and water and then it now begins to cool you so while people are suffering outside and how many of you know that there are gadgets right now there are like mini aces that have been designed you can carry with you not a fan so you carry your own atmosphere with you while people are sweating you are just moving and they say why you show them the gadget this is what is on you that you can be in zaria here and redefine your possibilities because the blessing is upon you the blessing that's what abraham gave isaac all the rest came and they were looking for physical things he gave them cow gave them cattle and said go but then he said, Isaac, I want to give you something. What made me me to, that I was called alone and I now became this great, I transfer it to you. And Isaac received it, no cow, no nothing. And he said, go. And as Isaac began to go, things started happening to his life. He even sowed in that land where there was famine. And he thought it was just his seed that fell to the ground no it was not only seed that fell to the ground something else fell on the seed too as it was entering the ground and the bible says he prospered that same year that same year please sit down the blessing please follow me i want you to pay attention god is giving you a bailout key don't sit down and say, I'm disadvantaged. Please help. I'm seeing the anointing on two people. Just help them. The blessing. The blessing upon you. This is what defines the possibilities of men. Now, there are many believers. Listen, listen. Let's just. Now, pay attention. Many believers will tell you, I am a seed of Abraham. And most of them are talking ignorance. They don't even know what they are saying sincerely i'm telling you is why it does not work let me tell you what most people are saying when they say i have the blessings of abraham what they mean is somebody now will come and give me a car even though they are not serious with god they think it does not matter and we keep mocking ourselves in the body of christ and finding out that this thing is not working if it is not working go back and review your understanding the moment darkness refused to go when it refuses to go don't blame darkness find out whether what you are calling light is really light because if it is light by john 1 5 it will shine in darkness it says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can carry darkness for many years many people sincerely so this thing is not working i'm showing you now some of you are just discovering for the first time that when it has to do with Abraham there are three layers there is the blessing of Abraham justification by faith received through the hearing of the gospel are we together there is the blessing the Holy Spirit now it leads to the blessings of Abraham every other physical thing influence greatness hallelujah Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, eh. 
Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound For He is God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah Sing it one more time Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound For He is God and God alone Hallelujah 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 Listen, please, I want you to pay attention. You are going to change the narrative of your destiny if you understand what I'm sharing with you. Believe me when I tell you this. Hmm. Many of you have received that first level, the blessing of Abraham and you think that is all there is you have been justified you will make heaven but you see that your life is still miserable no spiritual growth no intimacy no knowledge of the scripture because you have rejected the blessing and for many of you the blessing has come with the coming of the Holy Spirit but you have not learned how to activate it I will teach you and then you keep waiting for the third level blessings why is there no favor why is there no increase why is my ministry maybe not growing why is my business not growing your life is always natural and anything normal people suffer you suffer it too and you are wondering but god what is this thing you've told abraham and all of that why am i not seeing it in my life i'm showing you now And when the devil knows that there is ignorance or incomplete knowledge, he will now come and say, have you forgotten you came from Plateau State? Have you forgotten you came from Kaduna State? Look at Zaria. How do you intend to prosper here? And you say, it's true. Oh, let's, let's use our brain. Ah, you've done something to yourself now. If only you will understand, I am the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham means exemption is my birthright the seed of abraham it will always be different when it comes to me even if it means the rules being rewritten i carry an influence the seed of abraham koinonia i want you to believe this this is really the secret behind what you are you are saying it's not superstition it's understanding no barrenness fruitfulness i will make you exceedingly fruitful so anything you are doing you expect it and if it does not look like it you keep engaging the forces of victory without fail until it changes to what god has said now sit down please please sit down sit down sit down imagine your child knowing this from three years that I am the seed of Abraham. Son, as you go to school, you will meet several people. Ah. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I was sharing with the workers yesterday, please sit down. As I was passing, going to my house from yesterday, I was in tears. My eyes, I was just fighting tears, really. Didn't cry, but I was, I mean, just within my heart. I passed the place where we used to buy corn. I remember the location. 
I was still seeing it. Where we'd go and buy corn. I remember joking with the woman and said, oh, where's my wife? You are still the seed of Abraham. Doesn't matter what you are wearing. You are still the seed of, listen, listen, listen. You are not the seed of Abraham because you are a lecturer. You are not the seed of Abraham because you are a student. You are not a seed of Abraham because you are in Zaria. If you are waiting until you now get a job, you say, aha, no, I am a seed of Abraham. I'm going to show you how to activate it. It is not just blind confession. Hallelujah. My dear people, please hear me. Time will never change anything. It is revelation. Revelation. Help those under the anointing, please. Time only reveals. It does not change. Look at the things, look at the economy of nations right now. Are you seeing what is happening even in this country? Look at several people. Look at the hardship, the suffering. Some of these evil people, terrorists and the rest, they've made life. People cannot farm. They cannot do anything. How in the world will people survive? Respectfully speaking, look at our precious lecturers. How many months now? They've not been, you know, no strike, whatever it is. Strike there and people cannot. How? Let, let me tell you, if you are a natural man, I'm going to show you a scripture shortly. It's going to be one of our prayers. The rod of the wicked. Listen, most of you know, you think you know what you are saying. I'm going to show you what the lot of the righteous is. God was describing there that there is a certain condition where the power of darkness rests upon the inheritance of the righteous. It will make the righteous to start doing things they did not plan to do. Do you know the rate at which prostitution has increased now? Because people need to eat. Are we together now? There are many young people who bring back money and the parents cannot ask them where did this come from? Because how else will they eat? That is exactly what Satan wants. And if we keep quiet in the church and keep saying, don't worry, things are all right, there will be casualties beyond imagination. Are we together? I don't know if it happens so much here, but in fact, there has been a campaign right now of fishing out internet fraudsters in, in Abuja. They will just rent a flat and stay there and scam people internationally some of those people are children of pastors that is what happens when the devil heats up the fire economically and so on and so forth people go on rampage people with clean godly values now begin to consider plan b find out the rate at which people are returning back to villages and carrying small stones and idols and returning back because things are not working and they sit in church and this thing is not working and someone says listen you better come home and the person will come home they'll say this stone your grandfather used it hold it and go and bury it the seed of Abraham how then do you see the profiting of your believing of your faith when there is no manifestation hallelujah let me show you a scripture please sit down is God blessing someone if it is true that through Christ and in Christ we have access to these three dimensions number one the blessing of Abraham justification by faith number two the blessing the Holy Spirit and the anointing that comes from him number three the blessings of Abraham all of the physical blessings, benefits that come with being the seed of Abraham. Why then are we not seeing it manifest in our lives? That is my assignment this night. Why do I keep declaring that I am the seed of Abraham? Yet financially, I am down. My health is challenged. I cannot enjoy anything. What I lay my hands to do does not work. Did he not say I will be a blessing? I will be blessed and I will be a blessing. Let me show you the key. The key is found in John chapter 8 from verse 38 and 39. Jesus began to teach. 
Look at this a beautiful preacher boy. Help him, man. Eh? The boy is excited. He's a seed of Abraham too. Hallelujah. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which you have seen with your father. He rebuked them about their father and all of that. Now, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. In other words, don't mock us. Jesus is saying, your result is showing that you are connected to another kind of father. Are you getting the point now? It was the issue of fatherhood and sonship. And he's saying, listen, your behavior and your results, I can trace it to a kind of fatherhood. You are of your father, the devil, and his deeds. Because these attitudes you are displaying should not come from one who is connected to Abraham. And they said, no, you are teaching error. We are, we are Jews, don't forget. Abraham is our father. And he said, I will tell you why your results is against your confession. If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Write it down. The works of of Abraham that is the missing link behind confessing I am the seed of Abraham and manifesting the seed of Abraham in experience this is the bridge Abraham is our father they said Jesus said unto them if you were Abraham's children you would do the works of Abraham the works of of Abraham is someone learning now that means midwifing your understanding and your revelation and your confession of being Abraham's seed and walking in the experience of it the bridge there is called the works of Abraham that if you do the works of Abraham you will not even need to tell people, I am the seed of Abraham. Your results will be what will be speaking. It will become clear that indeed, the same way they, they did not need to tell Jesus they, that they were of, of Satan. Their works showed that you people are connected to Satan. You are of your father, the devil, and his desires because you are manifesting traits that we can trace back to Satan. That means something can happen to your life, ladies and gentlemen, that when people see you, they know you are not just Yoruba. They know you are not just Kaduna. Some maybe by earthly description, you are Kaduna or Yoruba, but the results you are commanding is a he that cometh from above is above all. The works of Abraham. Do you want to know the works of Abraham? Isaiah 1 19 Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise and I will see of the wonders of your word I will see out for joy I will see of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise listen this thing ba is not about how you look it's not about how you talk it's not whether you are liked or not it's a reality that is activated at the instance of revelation backed up with obedience Isaiah 1 19 there are two things Abraham did that if you do not do these things cannot be activated in your life number one Abraham was willing number two Abraham was obedient that is what converted prophecy to experience if ye be willing and if ye be obedient if ye be willing 
if you will hand over your will and if you are obedient it leaves you with an assurance you shall eat the good of the land if you are writing please underline that word the good of the land every land without exception once it is on earth there is good in that land the good of the land but the good of the land does not just come the prophet said O earth hear ye the word of the lord in fact he said as for the earth out of it comes bread there are riches that are stored in every territory but not for everybody if ye be willing now we're discussing the dynamics now of doing the works of abraham if you are willing and you are obedient if you are willing and obedient not if you are intelligent and you know what to say or you know what to do this right here ladies and gentlemen is where many believers miss out that is why we are unable to convert prophecy to become our experience because we are willing but maybe not obedient or we are obedient but maybe not willing in most cases it is the absence of both there is no willingness and there is no obedience are we together Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 you are the covenant keeping God you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh One more time. You are And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe listen carefully and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Let's read on. Verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Is that in your Bible? Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Please believe what you are reading. Blessed shall be the basket, thy basket and thy store. Verse 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. There are people who are only blessed when they go out of Zaria. There are people who are not blessed when they come in. There are others who are only blessed when they are in a location. But the Bible says, blessed shall thou be whether you come out or you go in. It will not make any change blessed verse 7 the Lord shall cause thy enemies ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. look at cheap victory that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face they shall come against thee one way and flee before you seven ways the Lord shall command the blessing are you seeing now who will command it the Lord shall command the blessing upon your storehouse that is the secret so that it is not empty your storehouse can you can build your account you can build whatever but if the blessing has not been commanded upon it it does not matter what it is there it will leave and in all that thou settest thy hands to do he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord shall give thee verse 9 
the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways verse 10 all the people of the earth shall see all the this is not a parable he's saying I will make it happen from nation to nation you don't have to be there for them to acknowledge that God is working and you don't have to be a preacher it is not by preaching when this statement was written the internet was not there so don't you think we're talking of um, the internet God is saying I will make it happen I will multiply your influence and make it trans-regional they will see that you are called by the name of the Lord they will be afraid of thee by what principle is this result being produced the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods now here comes your physical things the fruit of your body the fruit of your cattle the fruit of your ground the land which you swear to your fathers to give you verse 12 the Lord shall open unto you his treasure hold on the Lord can bless your storehouse but when he opens his treasure the heaven to give rain to your land in season it says he will bless the works of your hands Thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow. Do you believe what you just read? Except if you are not a Christian. Let me read a bit of it to help you. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, period. Shall make you, make you. Listen, in Psalm 23, don't turn there. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. I wish I had time. Maybe tomorrow. I will show you four things that he does to prove that he's shepherd. Number one, he makes you. Number two, he guides you. Number three, he leads you. Number four, he restores. These four things he does as proof that he's shepherd. He makes, he leads, he restores, he guides. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want not in the presence of his leadership his making his restoration hallelujah you made me great you made me special you made me great I give all I have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i am my best lord i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i am my best lord I give all I have to you. Verse 14. Let's get somewhere so we can pray. It says, And thou shalt not go aside from any of these words, which I command thee, whether to the right or to the left, to go after other gods and to serve them. 15. But, should in case, it will also come to pass. So there are two things that must come to pass. Whether the blessing of the Lord manifested in your life as the seed of Abraham or a plethora of woes and suffering. If thou will not hearken to the voice of the Lord, you see where your will comes in. I place before you both options. All of them are already empowered to come to pass. If thou shalt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded this day, that these curses shall come upon you and overtake thee. 16. Cause shall thou be in the city. Cause shall thou be in the field. Look at this kind of terrible thing. Cause shall be thy basket. Do you know what it means to be cursed? To be cursed means every advantage in anything is extracted out of it. That's what it means to be cursed. It does not mean to take away what you have. It means the factor that makes it a blessing is taken out. That's it. So you can have 
For instance, you can have 10,000 naira and you are holding pieces of papers because nothing is on it. It does not matter how diligent you are, you will still suffer. This has nothing to do with carelessness or being careful. It has nothing to do with savings or investment. A cause is not just something that is put upon you. A cause is also the good extracted out of anything. Eighteen. Cause shall be the fruit of your body. This is dangerous because you will still produce. It's only that you will produce for sorrow. Cost. And any increase that happens to you is only to cause pain. Whether it is promotion, whether it's whatever, it will only end you up in more troubles. Somebody shout God for me. If you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. You will do the works of Abraham. The willingness to learn, the willingness to go for knowledge, the willingness to submit yourself to superior revelation. Listen carefully. The willingness to find out why my life is like this and then obedience. When you now find the key, you obtain grace. This is the assignment of the engracing of God to empower you to walk in keeping with the scriptural requirements for an excelling life. Are we together? Abraham. So if it is true you are the seed of Abraham, more than your confession, we must see it in your obedience. Your obedience. Your obedience. Economically speaking, I've, I've done several teachings. You may want to listen to them. Okay, why am I not empowered financially in spite of the fact that I love the Lord? If I ask you, you are going to give me several reasons. Maybe I do not have a job or I do not have a good job or maybe, you know, things are not just working in my life. Those are sincere reasons. But believe me when I tell you, they are not the right reasons. It's true. Ladies and gentlemen, I believed this thing way before I started seeing any bit of physical realities manifesting in my life. So it is not something that I'm just talking because of what God is doing today. I was sharing with the leaders. You don't just talk and believe when you have seen the results. It is your believing and acting in faith that makes this happen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You see what God is doing through this ministry? Across the globe, across the nations, we're talking with the leaders, sharing some of the plans and some of the projects. Sincerely, let me tell you, we've not even started compared to what God is doing. We're, we're just bracing, we're just bracing to now really begin to make that kingdom impact. And it is by the Spirit. Don't you give the credit to just the wisdom of a man. No, 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 no. There are some things men cannot do. It is not given to men unassisted to produce certain results. You can wave failure goodbye and force it to wave you back because you know that I am the seed of Abraham. But apostle, I didn't go to school. But apostle, I cannot speak English. Apostle, I am elderly. Apostle, I am a lady in a family of 10. I'm the only one who is even born again. It makes no difference. The same Lord is rich unto all. Believe me when I tell you, it is God has sufficient power. When your obedience gives God room to honor you, you will be surprised. You will see God move in ways in your life that you will marvel and wonder. It is true. For a while, it may not look like it is working. That's why I read that scripture for you. Sell it not. When you are yet to see the results, sell it not. That means don't throw away that revelation and say it is not working. I tried it for one year. No, you have bought the truth. Sell it not. Sell it not because there will always be a performance if it is truth. Are we together? Yes. You have found the truth about prayer. Sell it not. You have found the truth about fasting. Sell it not. You have found the truth about diligence of walking with the word. Sell it not. You have found the truth about declaring over your destiny. 
sell it not you have found the truth about the power of diligence and capacity building sell it not you have found the truth that seeth thou a man diligent in his business he shall not stand before mean men he shall stand before kings sell it not even when you have not seen the result do not sell it don't throw it away if any man draws back he said my soul shall have no pleasure in him many are already discouraged this thing i'm not i'm not ready for all of this again let's just go whatever way you have bought the truth my precious people you bought it with your time you bought it with your sleepless nights you bought it with your times of fasting you bought it with your sacrifice seeds that you would have used to take care of yourself you gave it please sell it not do not allow the times to bring you to a point where you now want to sell it you have bought the truth and you are still buying with every koinonia service you are buying the truth with every message you are listening don't just say i am listening to a sermon as you sit down hearing from your phone from your laptop as you are reading a book just know that i am buying the truth sell it not the day that truth begins to bring returns in your life the nations will watch you and say i used to know you and you say no you knew a version of me that does not exist again is someone listening to me i am the seed of abraham i carry this consciousness believe me a seed of abraham i do not believe that any mortal man sustains the power to end my life before my time i am the seed of abraham the variables to destroy your life are too many physically speaking technology already makes it anything in today's world even this ac you see can be programmed to just air not gone people have inhaled this and died how about demonic things if you are afraid of physical things what of somebody who just stands my head my head and that's the end of it thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows every time you read the bible find out who god was talking to because he was not talking to everybody hallelujah when you handle these truths ba, let me tell you the truth it will only be layers of exploits from your life layers of exploits when it looks to men that you are plateaued at a level you come with another dimension because the jealousy of God stands behind you to defend you. And don't worry about the world of wicked men. It did not start. The world has been more wicked than it is today. To the point that God himself repented that he made man. So this is not the first time living among people who are wicked. Whether demonically or whatever. Your immunity is not in any earthly protection. Your immunity is in the fact that there is something supernatural that creates a garrison around your life are, are you understanding what i'm teaching you now please look at me my dear people from a physical standpoint when we look at our environment right now respectfully speaking what we see is just poverty and hardship maybe some of you as you are sitting down right now it looks like there is nothing on ground and you are already thinking of compromising you are just saying listen any man that comes to me i'll just marry him whether he's born again or not once he can help my family you're about to sell the truth i will join any group of friends there are some boys that say you join them there's somebody that can help you there are those who even want to start ministry i want to go somewhere let them wash your eyes at least if you prophesy you will not leave that meeting with less than five or ten thousand naira. look at how you devalue your life and your destiny is that what it takes to fund your life a seed of Abraham from this one room where the zinc is is the roof is leaking Lord I still believe I am the seed of Abraham and in the name of Jesus I obtain grace to do the works of Abraham right from that one room you are praying in the spirit you are doing the works of Abraham I activate the ministry of the Holy Spirit the blessing is at work in my life by the time you are saying it you may even be hungry there's no food and the tempter comes to tell you sell that truth it is not working remember it took you a lot to buy the truth meekness time patience hallelujah are you hearing what i'm saying now 
Yes. Sometimes you need to gather as a family and say, we may not yet see the blessings of Abraham manifest, but let us not forget that we have the blessing of Abraham. We have been justified by faith, given access now to this new and living way, even by the Spirit. Number two, that the blessing is upon us. Oh, you have need of the patience of faith. Follow them who through patience. And do you know, let me tell you the truth. I always like thank God that most of the things that God did in and through our lives happen in this city if I had come from somewhere you say don't mind all these people they are just talking nonsense everything happened right here I believed that right from where I was that it will make no difference I didn't have to live any fake life for anything people were coming from across the globe risking themselves to come here Oh, 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 your lifting has come. Oh, 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 your lifting has come. I was sharing with the workers when Koinonia started. I think the first few weeks, the total offering and everything was 20,000 naira. 20,000 naira. And then somebody stole it from the treasurer. I remember when she told me she was afraid of telling me, how do I now tell apostle that the 20,000 naira is gone? And when she told me, I said, no problem. Because to me, out of responsibility and leadership, I know. But from a spiritual standpoint, sincerely, I understand that it makes no difference. Anything that leaves you only when to gather its kind to come back. This is my understanding. This is, I'm not, I'm not, this is not motivational speaking. Nothing leaves the believer and then returns back the way it left. No. It only goes to gather its kind. As it leaves, that shepherd restores. He will make sure that whatever opportunities, this is why it says, for we know that all things, that there, is, there is an advantage. Help that woman, please. I'm seeing the power of God on her. Help that mama. There is an advantage. You see that? Where you can be sitting quietly and somebody will go to bed and the father of spirits will start waking men and say, come to this person. I want you to send some money to this person. And the person will call you and say, I don't know. It's not a license for laziness. It's an advantage that you have as the seed of Abraham quarter to shame God arises for you in a way that is unfair it becomes clear that ordinarily this would not have been your lot but for God hallelujah this is what I believe the faithfulness of God we trade this kingdom secrets with understanding among them knowing that I am the seed of Abraham Beloved people, please hear me. It's wonderful to know you are part of this global family. And there is a covenant that binds us. But I want you to know that in addition to that, you are the seed of Abraham. Expect certain things to start happening. Among the many things that represents the signature of being the seed of Abraham is the favor of God. Write that word favor down. There are three things that must happen to you as proof that the favor of God is at work in your life. I'm going to give it to you and then we'll pray for tonight. Are you ready? Number one, unusual kindness. This is a revelation God gave me. Unusual kindness. If it is true that the favor of God is at work in your life, unusual kindness. Number two, unusual access access to the hearts of kings access to systems and structures number three unusual opportunities Paul calls it an open door of opportunity you know a man who is favored by the repetition of these patterns in his life 
unusual kindness somebody must always be there ready to arise to stand and support what you represent number two unusual access when all doors close against you there is no favor mm -mm. number three unusual opportunity it was one prophetic opportunity that turned that young shepherd boy one opportunity do you know let me tell you this there are people you see just one opportunity god can just give them the inspiration of one song and that one song will bless them and, and you are wondering what if they did not receive the song opportunities are powerful if david did not carry that food do you know the father would have sent someone else that day something would have happened and another person would have been sent he would have dropped the food and returned back and david would have remained and died in the wilderness there unusual opportunities hallelujah i can't tell you how many times i'm traveling and then supernaturally i just bump into people and i look at them ah apostle this and that and that can begin another relationship powerful relationships you think it just happened until you know what it takes for opportunities to happen you know that only god can make opportunities happen are we together you just go to the bank and as soon as you are leaving you just rub shoulders with someone oh sorry sorry oh very cautious person how are you what is your name my name is this and that and that okay you look very smart what do you do well nothing right really nothing what did you study I studied this and that you are the exact person we are looking for don't you think that was a mistake it looks like a series of coincidences but there is a finger behind playing this thing and it happens because of what is on you I am the seed of Abraham I am the seed of Abraham I am the seed of Abraham everything i do is blessed everything i do is blessed beyond the efforts and that which is put in there is a spiritual factor koinonia understand what is making this ministry work if you think it's just because of joshua selman's intelligence look at me this is all of me you are smarter than that you went to school no nicodemus came to jesus by night and he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Unusual kindness, unusual access. I'm saying this because from tonight, in the name of Jesus, that grace must start speaking in your life. That grace must start speaking in your life. It has nothing to do with gender has nothing to do with whatever it is unusual kindness unusual access listen that when this grace is at work in you there will always be someone to stand by you and support what you represent it's true the seed of Abraham the seed of Abraham when men say there is a casting down as the seed of Abraham privileged by grace in Christ that for me it will be that there is a lifting up now thanks be to God who causes us always 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 to triumph always to triumph hallelujah please sit down we're going to pray now I have indoctrinated myself and I've believed in the love of Jesus for me and I've believed in what he's able to do I was telling the leaders yesterday if there is a sudden divine announcement right now that God wants to bless 10 people I will start praying for the remaining night because I know that one space is already taken the seed of Abraham the same Lord is rich unto all in America in UK there is no difference 
the same Lord. Ah, I see, I discern that God is no respecter of persons. It is not the color of your skin, my precious people. It is not that you are in Zaria here, believe me. Apostle, but I'm staying somewhere in New Extension. I'm staying somewhere behind uh, the rail. I'm staying somewhere. I come from a family where there is nothing. That is not the reason why. If you be willing, willing to do what? To pursue light willing to pursue knowledge willing to pursue jesus the way you need to know how things are done results are not accidental consistent results are proof that you are engaging the laws of the kingdom please hear me the the fortitude to find out what you do not know is powerful knowledge the ability to search Lord, why is my finances not working? It is true that I'm the seed of Abraham. I now need to do the works of Abraham. As I study, I'm doing the works of Abraham. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. You go and get the power to get wealth, part one and two. When others are sleeping, you are doing the works of Abraham. You are showing God that you are willing. You can't be obedient when you don't have knowledge. Obedience is based on an instruction. Is that true? If I do not say come and you are walking, you are strolling. The difference between walking to me and strolling is I ask you to come. I prophesied as I was commanded. Are we together? Okay. Abraham believed God. Lord, I believe you. In the name of Jesus from this one room, I know that I'm a champion serving the purposes of God with my life. I may not have any earthly advantage. Maybe my father may have gone to be with the Lord. My mother may have gone to be with the Lord. But I lift up my eyes like Abraham did right where I am. In the name of Jesus, I contend for transformation. I may in Zaria be in Zaria, but Zaria would never be in me. I decree and declare, it's the word of God that will be in me. I am creating my own garden of Eden by the power of the Holy Spirit God now begins to tell you you'll be a mighty man of God you are going to have a church and you will lead people and as it is right now you don't even know the name of the ministry the key is not to jump around and fail around is to pray in the name of Jesus Abraham succeeded Jesus who was his seed succeeded now in Christ I am the seed of Abraham that blessing that makes people succeed is upon me I am declaring by the Spirit of the Living God Are we together there is no job no nothing father in the name of Jesus the Bible declares that you are my shepherd and I will not want I tap into your ministry of making your ministry of leading your ministry of restoring your ministry of guiding I shouldn't be in this state financially you have to make something a way for me you have to lead me I do not want to be in want show me the way Thou shalt show me the path of light, for it is in your light that I see light. You are doing the works of Abraham. Hallelujah. And while you are praying, God will lead you to one message. God will lead you to one book. And you are reading it. You are hungry, but you are reading it. Knowing that you are waving certain dimensions goodbye. I may be hungry now, but in the name of Jesus, I am still the seed of Abraham. And I will feed nations. I will not compromise. Abraham did not bend. Not to the left and to the right. The devil will be saying, you are still hungry. I agree. Jesus was hungry too in the wilderness. But he did not bend. He did not turn stones to bread. I will not turn stones to bread. I live by the word of God light comes to you you will turn and look at your former self and you will give God the glory because you will see that things would have changed look at me take your eyes away from things like cars house clothes no you are chasing the wrong things those things will come so so I've said this thing for a long time focus on the things that matter what is a car a car is not proof that you are blessed a car can be a proof that you are valuable. To be valuable does not necessarily mean to be blessed. There are many people who are not born again and have these things. Mm -mm. If then ye be evil. If the Lord is to be your shepherd, you must be a sheep. He's not a shepherd to goats. He's not a shepherd to rebellion. 
to enjoy his ministry of shepherdhood you must be a sheep a sheep does not have horns the only way a sheep is protected is by the ministry of the shepherd thy rod and thy staff listen it's time to go for knowledge any area that is not working in your life stop jumping around camp with God the works of Abraham I am the seed of Abraham Lord help me open my eyes light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like menorah light me Lord Are you ready to pray? Prayer point number one. You are going to declare it afresh. Let the realm of the spirit hear your declaration again. I am the seed of Abraham. Invincible. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The blessing is upon me. Someone declare. In Christ. I am an heir. Joint heir with Christ. An heir of God. In the name of Jesus. Failure is not my heritage. In the name of Jesus, someone is declaring the righteousness that is of faith speaks on these wise. Declared by the Spirit. Someone declared, forget about your situation. While we look not at the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen, for the things that are unseen are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal, permanent. Someone declare over your life, over your family, it's a new season. Abundance is my heritage in Christ for the sake of the majesty of God. Favor is my heritage in Christ. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. Someone pray. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Outside, make sure you pray. Those following online, pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. The seed of Abraham, I am willing to pursue knowledge. I am willing to seek the Lord. I am willing to walk in the ways of the Lord. I obtain grace for obedience. Obedience. Complete obedience. We want to see you. Like a mighty rushing wind We want to dwell out Under the shadow of your wings We want to see you Like a mighty rushing wind We want to dwell Under the shadow of your wings hey, hey, hey. No, no, no Like a mighty wind Spirit of the soul From the pages of my heart, let my worship in the never end. You are praying now, we are wrapping up tonight. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin the never end. To the God of all flesh, be all my God and your name is the hour. Your name is Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Oh my God, oh my God, and Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. 
hallelujah now listen in one minute you are going to declare lord you are my shepherd the favor that represents the blessing of abraham let it rest upon my life and begin to speak someone pray men are rising to show me kindness men are rising to give me unusual access men are rising to provide opportunities by the spirit someone pray the lord is my shepherd i shall not want not in zaria not in abuja not in nigeria not in america not in europe the lord is my shepherd shame and reproach is far from me the seed of abraham minutes i'd like you to pray decree and declare in famine i will laugh in the name of jesus christ i shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted no day a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side none will hurt me i will stand and behold with my eyes the reward of the wicked the name of the Lord is a strong power. I run into it and I am saved. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please do not miss tomorrow's service. We'll have the time to pray and I'll be teaching you something powerful. Now we're going to pray one prayer. It's going to be a prayer of exemption. Listen, especially for us who are here in Zaria and then across. I know that from an economic standpoint, many things seem to be down. Students are not there. Lecturers have not been paid. We're going to pray and declare the prophetic prayer of exemption. While we pray that God will have mercy upon the land, you're going to say, Father, that grace that exempts me, the same way Goshen was exempted. There was darkness in Egypt, but there was light in Goshen. I obtained grace to be exempted. Someone open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray for you and your family. Parents, pray for your children. Exempted by the favor of God. Exempted by the finger of God. Exempted from death. Exempted from hardship. Exempted from poverty. Exempted from spiritual bankruptcy. Exempted from backsliding. Exempted from lukewarmness. Exempted from prayerlessness. Exempted from wordlessness. Exempted from wrong association. Exempted from being a victim of wrong situations and circumstances. Someone declare exemption. That mantle of exemption is upon my life. In my going out, in my coming in, I am exempted by the power of the Holy Ghost. Koinonia declare this grace that is upon this house by the privilege of God's grace to be exempted in the name of Jesus. I stand in my prophetic caution. No darkness, no darkness, no darkness in my finances. No darkness. I walk in abundance. I decree and declare helpers arise for me ideas arise for me opportunities open up unto me i am preferred honored by the spirit for in the name of jesus i pray for in the name of jesus i pray for in the name of jesus i pray can we pray for Zaria in one minute and then we'll wrap up for tonight? Listen, I'd like you to declare because of one righteous person, Sodom and Gomorrah was to be spared. God had to take that righteous person out so that there will be zero righteous people for him to punish the land. You are going to pray because I am here. Zaria, I decree and declare by the ordinances of priesthood, you must respond favorably to the saints. Lift your voice and begin to declare. Declare over Zaria. We command the blessing 
upon this territory we command a blessing over Kaduna State security wise economy wise in the name of Jesus Christ the blessing of the Lord is upon our territory the sound of poverty and languishing will not be heard witty inventions innovations by the spirit please pray our young people will not be victims of prostitution and violence and cultism and gambling and every kind of satanic thing the lord will restore dignity the dignity of kingdom integrity i'd like you to pray spirituality will not drop in zaria the fire of the holy ghost will not drop may god continue to raise young men and women people who will carry this mantle of revival and grace and godliness and consecration and fire even upon this land for in jesus name i pray in jesus name i pray there are so many people give me a minute let me make an altar call and then we are done for tonight please no movement around you are here and you have not made any decision for Jesus. You are in any of the overflows, overflow three, overflow one, overflow two, or you are following by way of television, you are following online or every, any channel. I want you to know that the Lord wants to give you a new beginning. Listen carefully. I mentioned three layers of that encounter with the blessing of Abraham. The first is justification by faith you need to make your ways right with god once and for all or you are here and you are saying apostle in the last six months in the last three months in the last one year i remember making that decision but right now my life has gone down everything has gone down i need restoration and i need rededication i'm going to count one to three for the sake of time if you're in overflow one you move to your your overflow as we allow as many once the front is full then wherever overflow three all the overflows and if you are following from your home from any part of the world as i pray this prayer right there in your home your office wherever it is i'd like you to give jesus a chance to have a new beginning with you i'm going to count one to five now or one to three the holy spirit is speaking to you leave your seat and come now one let's celebrate them as they come don't wait for anybody to be the first to come win that war let it be from the depth of your heart come please clear the way for them as they come to the front god bless you koinonia is this the best you can do come to jesus come in today come in to my heart lord jesus into my heart into my heart come into my heart lord jesus come in today come in to stay come into my heart to lord jesus apostle i want to come out but i'm ashamed i'm ashamed of my friends leave them alone and come to jesus christ salvation is a personal affair come to jesus and let him give you a new beginning the bible says that he is able to save even unto the uttermost all the overflows make your way please i count three and then we begin to pray come to jesus god bless you as you come god bless you as you come hallelujah now thank you very much for making this decision if you are joining them please come very quickly i'm about to pray now and let me say this every time we ask people to come to the altar for prayer if you come late you were not saved you are just indicating salvation it matters that you pray that prayer if you come just when they are saying amen let the counselors pray with you amen is not the key to salvation are we together you have to confess the lordship of jesus consciously use your will 
like Abraham did. So I thank you for coming. I celebrate every one of you. No matter what is right or wrong in your life, I want you to know that this Jesus can give you a new beginning. I salute you for your courage. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please say this after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. Say it. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that you are my savior, you are my Lord, and you are my king. From today, I start afresh. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you. You have drawn these ones to yourself. Some of them are crying. Lord, you see the sincerity of their hearts. And the Bible says, as many who will come to him, you will in no wise cast away. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I decree and declare that you are recipients of the life of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. You start afresh and you go only from glory to glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, let's celebrate them. I want you to follow, please. Just go to my right down there. Are a few officials who will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seat. Can, can we appreciate them as they go? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. There are many of you before tomorrow's service, you will return with strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Testimonies that prove indeed that you are the seed of Abraham. And anything that has defied this statement and this truth in your life, we curse it right now. In the name of Jesus. You walk in victory, you walk in abundance. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow by five. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.